What is going on YouTube and cryptocurrency family? My name is Harry and I am the Crypto Vet. Uh, thank you for tuning in to hear my take on the crypto market, compelling news and everything in between. So if you have been watching my only two videos up to now, you will have known that I have been very bearish on the market today. So if we go ahead and just get things started, we can see on coin market cap here bitcoin is at about 9100 it has been testing those upper resistance lines that i mentioned before and uh as everything else tether is still tether still right at one dollar and xrp boy seeing some decreases here okay so if we just break this down and we don't look at any of those templates i have that have a bunch of marks and lines everywhere we just go to the weekly candle chart we can see that in the middle of this week we're on an indecisive spinning top candle here which we won't know until this closes but before we were in a downtrend if we switch over to the Heikinashi, we can see that there was indecision and then as of right now we are building a candle to the bottom so i don't use the Heikinashi that much for trends in the small term here or not in the small term um just as i'm trying to dictate a trend but i i use them to see if we had trends before so if we zoom out, and I'm not going to add any of my crap that I had before, and I'm just going to do just a simple, very simple trend line analysis here. We have our long-term two-and-a-half-year resistance somewhere in this point. I can get even more specific, but I'm just going to draw these lines really fast just to see why and what's been going on and how we have a lot of resistance to break through if we are going to go on that bull run. Um, I'm very bearish at the moment because there's very, a lot of uncertainty in the world. Um, and with all this uncertainty, I don't like the fact that we are... Everybody on YouTube is trying to just push that this bull run, bull run, bull run, buy, buy, buy. This could be your last chance. And, you know, it very well could be. But I want to just present you an, just an unbiased side here. And, you know, I, I think the bull runs here. I just think it's not quite... So I'm going to just draw these just simple trend lines and we got here that have been very, very good lines of resistance and support. So down at the bottom, I have two green lines that I drew going all the way back to 2017. We have tons and tons of confirmation in all of these spots that show these lines have been good and bueno, right? And all of these spots here it has showed that no matter what, we have had a hard time getting past these points. All right, so that being the case, where do I think it's gonna go and where do you think it's gonna go? If we just follow what's been going on, we know that we can't really get above this line and we've been testing it. We've been testing it for a while with no avail, but we haven't been really testing these bottom lines hardly at all. If I add in just simple moving averages, here um, we have the 25 50 100 and 200 day moving averages yeah we are kind of bouncing off the top here but these moving averages that i have calculated here are specific to make it look like it's down here at the bottom right if i kind of take these indicators away and i go and um, that's just a 4ma that i like to use but let's go ahead and just find another one real quick so let's do a moving average so uh, and let's do an ema okay so we have a nine this is the standard on this weekly channel cart. So let's go ahead and add another exponential moving average. Okay, and let's just set this for another fib number. Let's do a good one. Let's try 21. Okay, so we have these two now and we have been testing or supporting one or the other on the bottom of this moving average here. Okay, that can be a good or a bad thing. My point is, is we can all make up whatever the hell we want to just say, yes, it's going to be on top or yes, it's supporting below this. Um, but either way, everybody's making their decision based off of different numbers, different everything. But the same thing that everybody is making a decision on is that we are having a hard time getting above that point. So I still am in my bearish tendencies that this is not going to go up first. It'll go down first. I think it's going to go down test this line here first and then depending on what we get here we'll see if we even 
fill out my left, my inverse head and shoulders, or do we make a whole new pattern, a whole descending Elliott wave, whatever the case would be, but we're tightening in this little triangle here, and what goes from here is, you know, nobody knows. Everybody says they do, doesn't, but my opinion is there's more bearish news out there, and I don't know, you're gonna have a hard time changing my mind. So, I, you know, of course, I'm not a financial advisor. Um, I am that right there, doctor slash idiot. So take everything with a grain of salt. Um, if we go to the four hour candles here, we can see those same lines that I just drew with you real quick. Um, and we're just, we're in this little zone here that's just having a lot of trouble. So, but the more we stay in this zone, the increase in volatility and the breakout will happen. Just which way will it go? So, um, Right there. So this is just my monthly candle chart that I showed in my other videos. It's just showing that, you know, I'm not changing any of this crap on here. I just want to see how the pattern fills in. We already closed this red candle before, and you know we're starting another red candle. So on this chart it shows that we're kind of following the pattern, but that can be changed. Um, if we go to this weekly chart again with the template not moved, we can see that we are have three red candles and a fourth one forming. So once we have a, a few red candles, this is when I like to just randomly look at the Heikinashi and just kind of see where the trend could be setting. And right now the trend looks like it's on its way to a downtrend. We got all the candle wicks aiming down more than they are aiming up, even though the middle one's spinning top, more telling me kind of like indecision in the market, which of course we have no idea. Everybody's like, what price is good? Where are we at? Where should we go? But we're kind of starting to form a potential red candlestick again so if that goes you know that's just building support for me to think that it is a bearish market uh, we already saw that and here if we just kind of go in this is the same charts that haven't been changed just with some fib lines on it so if we got the 0.5 fibonacci here we can see that we've been using that as both a support and a resistance line and we just went underneath it so the next one to get us at the 0.382 Fibonacci is going to put us right at around 8,000, 8,100 and I, I think before that happens we'll have to test that solid 8,800 that's been a very very big number for us to try to get below. Most people are pretty happy buying Bitcoin at 8,800. So overall I think it's bearish. I still expect this to go down, um, you know, using whatever charts you want to use, you know, our RSI is still on the decrease. Um, yeah, we kind of look like we're an uptrend on the MACD, but in reality, it's still going down and we could have that crossover happen in the next week or so. I think July 4th is going to prove to be a big day. There's just so much going on um, in the world. If we go to COVID, numbers going up, talking about locking down stuff again, don't know what to do. I know we did try to go out to eat yesterday, and it seemed like half the restaurants had said, "Now nah, screw it, we're done with this. The other half were pretty fine just letting as many people in. It's like, good luck, everyone. Um, so on interesting news, I saw that uh, on TradingView, Jeff Bezos' wealth surges past Bitcoin's market cap. So right now, he is currently the richest dude in the world. $171 billion dollars. If we go back to here, it's 167 billion is the market cap for Bitcoin. And just the funny part that made me laugh is that his wife, after she divorced him, now became the world's fourth richest woman. So all you gotta do is, you know, have a little thing with Bezos there and ta-da, you got money. So Bezos, if you're looking for a new man, I got you. All right, another funny news. Uh, not funny news, uh, bearish news. We have Crypto Whale Joe 007 criticizes the bullish Bitcoin price predictions. And I was saying in one of my other videos that a whale comes in and sells a bunch or buys a bunch. They can manipulate the market just like that. So that being the case, having this guy come back in kind of scares me because, you know, if he could say one thing and do the other. He could say one thing and do exactly that. So, you know, use that with a grain of salt. Um, and then the other thing that's, kind of good maybe bad who knows is if you get caught with anything in china i would be very scared but chinese bitcoin billionaire and bitfinex shareholder xiaodong reportedly held an inquiry so this guy here apparently having to do with something going along the lines of false and 
you know, fraudulent transactions, which is always the case, confirmed that has in fact been detained uh, by Hangzhou police. I'm not sure how you say that. It is extremely important to be clear that one detained is not the same as arrested. It does not necessarily follow that. This is in relation to Ren Ren Bits business operation. So um, I have nothing to do with any of these companies, not sure. Um, but anything bad in the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency world can have bad effects just as much as any good information. So um, today, trying to just kind of bring another side saying last time I had lots of good news. Well, today I can find some bad news, but there's just as much good news today coming on in the whole crypto space. But just to point out some of the bad things currently going on, uh, in 2019, Zhao Dong famously predicted that, sev that the several years of negative and sideways crypto movements would soon be coming to an end. Who knows if we're there yet? Um, I think we're about to hit the bottom, and then after that, we'll see years and years of increase. But that, I think, is going to do it. Uh, just overall, um, you know, if you have Bitcoin right now and you're trying to buy in, you know, if you don't know anything about trading, by all means, buy in and hold because eventually it will be good. If you're trying to day trade, I suggest you wait because your time to buy in lower will be soon. My calling, probably around July 4th, we're going to see that 8,800 mark get tested. And if we go below 8,800 and we close, it's going to go even lower and we're going to test some of our other uh, supports here. So if you're a day trader, I would say back out for now. But remember, I am... A doctor slash idiot, not a financial advisor. This is purely for entertainment purposes. And um, I will have another video out tonight that will be going over and starting my three minute crypto series. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned. Things are just starting to get better here.